Hello and welcome to episode three of the Bonus Level podcast, uh, where you're stuck with me for 20 minutes, but hopefully we can give you some value to level up. Uh, I apologize today. Uh, I went for a lovely weekend away just to um, get a bit of a break and I ended up getting uh, a cold, maybe even COVID, I haven't tested yet. Uh, so apologies for my husky voice. So off the back of a presentation I did last week for the lovely guys at the Recruitment Network, uh, where we spoke about how to level up your recruitment podcast, I thought it would be a great idea to do a episode on getting started with a podcast. Um, I know that it is on the agenda for quite a few recruitment agencies and the ones that are doing it are doing extremely well off the back of it. Uh, it's something that we uh, offer as a solution and we help um, businesses run and propel their recruitment podcasts. But um, when you actually sit down and think about, oh, let's launch a podcast, it can sometimes be quite a daunting thing. So um, through our experience running around 20 uh, plus recruitment agency podcasts, um, we're 300 plus episodes under our belt. We've kind of built a bit of a uh, understanding of what works and some of the things you need to be thinking about when getting started with your podcast. So hopefully this can uh, demystify some things, uh, give you a bit of confidence to get going. And, and as always, if you've got more questions or you want any help, I'm more than happy to jump on a Zoom call to discuss in more details. Uh, and my Calendly link is on the Search That podcast, uh, on the Search That website. And uh, just to add to this, we also have a full ebook that breaks down uh, launching a podcast. Uh, so feel free to jump again onto our website. Uh, and it's just a little bar at the top, uh, call to action. You just download it. It's not gated or anything. So you just download it and it gives you a full rundown on getting started. So it'll probably delve deeper into some of these things that I'm talking about today. But within this episode, I will be breaking it into four chunks. Uh, the first one would be why podcasting uh, could be good for your recruitment business um, and breaking down, you know, what, what what are the main reasons why you should be launching a podcast uh, and what benefit it can have to your, your business objectives. The second one is uh, the strategy and planning the podcast this is the most important step in getting that right. Uh, and then the third part is the getting started and talking you through some of the hardware and the software and just what you need to do to get your first um, episode recorded. And then the fourth one is just touching on how to market your podcast to start off with. Uh, there's lots of cool things you can do once you get started. Uh, and that's something that I covered in that talk with TRN. But um, there's just some foundational things you should probably get started with uh, just to build some uh, demand around what you're creating and actually get some listeners, uh, some marketing clatter out of it. Um, so let's start with why podcasting uh, could be beneficial for your recruitment business. So I'll I'll touch on this briefly, um, but I think there are three core benefits. Uh, there is a myriad of things that make uh, a recruitment podcast amazing for business. But the three core ones are firstly, uh, it's a fantastic platform for building your brand reputation and your founder reputation. So as you go and you build an audience and you get known within the market that you specifically choose your podcast in, you're going to become a known um, minor celebrity, you know, a thought leader within that industry, uh, especially if you keep it consistent over a long period of time and the content is good and the guests, potentially if you do guests, the good. Um, it's a great well, way to propel um, your personal brand. Um, and especially if you like couple that with, you know, regular posting on LinkedIn and using the podcast to post on LinkedIn, you can really create like a nice, a mix of mediums to um, get your name out there in the market and get known. Uh, the second one is uh, it really can drive business development or client relationships. Um, if you are unable to reach out to some people potentially in higher positions or you're just getting stuck in the myriad of uh, you know LinkedIn emails and sales pitches that happen, um, having a conversation about getting someone onto the podcast is a great way to break through that noise and then potentially build a good amount of rapport with the guest and slowly build a relationship. Uh, we've had many uh, clients that say, you know, up to about 40% of 
of their sort of new business leads come through the podcast and guests that they book on because it's a much better proposition than just uh saying do you want to do you want to buy my services you know the, the classic way of trying to cold calls or, or hard sell uh, and the final one um is it can create a really good content marketing machine for your business um and what i mean by that is uh, over time you're going to be able to really utilize the content that you're talking about um, you're going to have a ton, ton of evergreen um, really good uh, informative value driven um, topics that you're going to cover on your podcast and you can just absolutely repurpose a lot of that into social media um, blogs uh, a whole myriad of other things um, so really it can be like the, the linchpin um, someone calls it a content waterfall so it all comes down from the podcast episode you can create you know mum's worth of content off of one episode which is absolutely amazing um the second um breakdown we're gonna we're gonna move on to now is um strategy and getting started and the planning of your podcast so i would always um start off by saying uh, and you'll probably get sick of me talking about this and all, even our guests but it just rings home true is doing your research doing the qualitative research beforehand talking to people uh, clients and candidates um, and other people within the market about you know what is there a need for figuring out a niche or a, a topic people are hungering for within that industry finding out the biggest challenges and the pain points and then making it your mission to uh, go and so solve that and then that takes me on to my next point is you really want to figure out your why behind your podcast um, there are commercial gains behind this, but actually having something that's meaningful and you have a mission um, where you can potentially build a movement off the back of it, it's going to be a much more um, stronger proposition um, and it's going to resonate a lot better with your potential audience that you're building. Um, so figuring out you know, a huge challenge in the industry where it's something like diversity, um, women in the industry, you know, skill shortage, you know, there's a whole... Uh, diverse range of things going on um so just figuring out what what is a huge issue um what is a huge thing that people will resonate with and then hammering home and then finding the right topics and guests around that um for your content the next one is picking your format uh, so there's probably about three formats you can get a bit creative with your podcast for sure but the three main ones are uh, potentially running a solo podcast interview yourself um, or having a co-host on there, or finally having actually guests on there um, in that sort of interview format. Um, to get the most benefit out of it, I think one of the, may, the, the best ones you probably want to be doing is the interview one, um, talking to thought leaders and market leaders within the industry. Um, to get their unique take and, and figuring out what the best are doing, um, and that allows you to you know piggyback off their audiences, um, but then also like we, we touched on before building that business development but it's also a very personal thing you know it's whatever you feel like you prefer to do if you can go like the solo or the co-host that's great because then that's going to really propel your own personal brand um but you're going to want to have the knowledge beforehand and be able to have something to talk about and show up every day um so that can sometimes be a bit of a challenge whereas when you have a guest um takes a little bit of the pressure off you um with that sort of interview process and you can get some really good insights that obviously you don't know about so the next part is figuring out your topics don't go too technical especially if you're recruiting in something like uh, technology or or legal or something along the lines of that um a lot of the time you're going to get um it way over your head if you try and cover the more technical side of of the um spectrum in that market leverage your unique position in the market as a recruiter um so you can start to challenge some of the things that you know, you solve hiring issues and um, that can be absolutely massive for these businesses. Um, so figure that out. There's a great um, uh, client of ours uh, who's who's got an amazing podcast, Andy Davis, the Data Center podcast. Um, traditionally, if he did a technical version of that podcast, it could become quite boring um, and it could become quite um, complex very easily. What he does, he talks about the stories and the events happening and talks to guests about that and it creates a much nicer um sort of format of a podcast and he's seen great success doing it that way and then finally you kind of want to figure out who's going to actually host this podcast um you can want to find someone in your organization 
who's going to be able to consistently show up. Um, but it's also somebody who's naturally curious, especially if you're doing a um, guest format, someone that's going to be able to ask questions, who's going to want to break things down, ask the the more difficult um, follow-ups um, to get really good insight out of the guest and really get the nuggets of wisdom. And then finally, you know, thinking about the consistency and the cadence of how you put out your podcast episodes is super important. Um, you know, it's great to say, yeah, let's do one weekly. Um, but we find sometimes that that can sometimes get a little bit too much and you can get a little bit overwhelmed with having to a find guests or put in the time to record that podcast. So really be honest with yourself and figure out when can I actually do this episode? When, when, how, how reasonable, um, could my cadence be, you know, whether it is fortnightly or even monthly, um, over time with the consistency people will expect a certain um time for you to post that podcast out so if you can keep um consistent with that um it's going to it's going to land a lot better and it's going to be a lot less pressure on you and then the final thing um is this fantastic quote uh or slash tweet that um i always like to share a bit of data and it is 90 percent of podcasters don't get past episode three. That's a 1.8 million who quit. Of the other 200,000 left, 90% will quit after 20 episodes. That's another 180,000 gone. So to be in the 1% of podcasters in the world, you only need to publish 21 episodes and hopefully you consistently publish post then. So it just shows you that even though there are a lot of people doing podcasts recently um if you don't have the consistency you will sort of fizzle out and flake out and become part of that 90 percent or that um 200 000, um that ends up flaking and don't get past uh, 20 episodes so as long as you get past that that big window then you're um you're, you're in that one percent and you're you're laughing really so let's now move on to getting started with your podcast. You kind of got your strategy, you know what you're talking about, you know it's going to impact your business objectives. That's great. Let's get an episode recorded. So for um, for example, say we're just going to now touch on probably the interview format because that's what we find uh, drives the most benefit for recruitment agency owners. Um, so what you're going to want to do is initially find your guest um, and sometimes with the guest, um, we want to probably find people that um, are a bit, a bit senior, probably have got a good story to tell um, and match forward with our uh, mission that we've built. Uh, and then we reach out to them, the G over LinkedIn, for example, uh, and invite them on. Um, in our podcast, the B book, we've got a great sort of like script that you could just copy and use uh, to get people to join your episode. Um, so, but, so say they've agreed, that's fantastic. Sometimes it's really good to use something like Canadly uh, and have a unique podcast one for them to just book in when's, uni when's uh, uh, right for them. Um, and what we usually recommend is just to get the most out of the questions and figure out what is um, exciting for them. Book in a quick uh, 15, 20 minute conversation a couple of days before the podcast is due to launch or due to record uh, and just catch up with them, find out what's really important to them. Uh, things that they're thinking about at the moment and just discuss through uh, and ease their worries and make some introductions. It's a great way to initially just uh, build that rapport and create a sort of format of questions that's really going to sort of um, have the most impact. Um, something that we do uh, with our clients is then we go and take those questions away and put them together into a nice branded PDF that then we send over to the guest beforehand. Kind of really sets the tone of the professionalism that you're going to sort of have in the interview. Um, but then also puts them at ease. So you can put things on like, oh, the target audience, the runtime, um, and then these sort of quick sort of bonus questions you might have in there for them to prepare. Now, you don't want to over-prepare with in terms of the questions. Uh, you don't want to stick to a, like a really strong fam format. Just keep it a loose format, I would say, because there always comes the point where you may want to dig deeper into a question or you may have a bit of a left field thing that pops into your head um, that you want to ask. The, that the guest hasn't quite prepared for. And that's great because 
then you'll probably get a more less scripted um, answer and something that's maybe a bit more candid from them. So that's great. So you've put your guest in, you've got your questions ready, they're prepared. Now let's start off um, by potentially using our software, something like Zoom would be the sort of the great starting point. Um, you can just record it to the cloud and then download that and then um, edit it from there. So that's probably what you want to start off with in terms of getting your first guest booked in and sort of recording it. It's very simple. There are some other software tools that you can use, like Riverside is a great one, um, or just use your standard um, recording platforms like Zoom. Don't don't try and overdo it too much with how complicated it needs to be. Um, it can just be super simple. Uh, just get started. That's all I, I, I say. Just get started, then you can iterate and, and grow. And if you want to do in-person and live ones, then that's great. But it's a lot of traveling. It's a bit more of a commitment, uh, and it's a bit more logistically hard to maneuver. So let's now move on to some of the hardware that you want to get. Um, so a guest is booked in, et cetera. Um, but now you've got to go and get your um, your microphone and your webcam. So the two that I recommend is um, the Logitech Brio um, for your webcam. That is uh, a 4K webcam that is about 90 pounds. I think it might even be cheaper, um, but that does a great job initially as something that to just get you started and just gives you a bit of an edge if you ever want to make clips, etc., out of your podcasts, which I definitely would recommend you do. Uh, and then the next thing for the for the microphone, the big important one, is um, going for a Blue Yeti. Um, we find that's a, quite an easy one to set up. You can just um, plug it in with a USB and get started and just tweak the settings a little bit to get it right for you. Um, it ends up only costing you around £200 to get your equipment started. But spend that money on just having a good audio and uh, a good bit of video to start off with um, and then you can build it as you grow don't just start with a pair of airpods and a laptop because the quality is going to be awful and a lot of people are going to listen on noise cancelling headphones while at the gym and if the uh, audio just does not sound great they're going to turn off and um, probably not listen again so it's important to get that right and now so we've got our um podcast strategy mapped out we've booked in guests we've got great uh hardware and software ready to go we're recording our first episode fantastic um now how do we start to build a audience around this and how do we actually get listeners uh i would say potentially in in, in the recruitment market the best way to build your audience is through uh, repurposing your content uh through linkedin um, and just the consistency over time of, of that. So the first thing I would potentially say is you want to think about the SEO behind your episode titles, potentially figuring out searchable things, um, guide on how to do this or throwing in your market keyword and uh, thinking about, you know, if someone typed in that content episode, um, content, the content within that episode, what that would look like as a, as a searchable key term. That is a first first type to sort of kind of get organic people to to come to your podcast, uh, and this really does work on on platforms like uh, Spotify. Someone might get bored and they might be looking for, um, or they might be desperate and they will be looking for, you know, how you know hiring tips in software development. And if yours comes up as a searchable term, then you're going to get a listen. Uh, and then the second thing is really utilizing LinkedIn to the best of its ability. Uh, so let's let's talk about this a little bit. So what we really like to do here is um, stretch uh, your content. So take your podcast episode and get as much uh, marketing potential out of it, uh, as many social posts out of it. Uh, so the first thing that we always do with an episode is upload it to something called otter.ai. So that's otter like the animal, O-T-T-E-R.ai. And it is a uh, AI, AI transcribing tool. Um, and what that will do is it will take the full episode and um, use AI to fully write out everything that was said uh, and then you've got a fully um, written, it's not perfect, but a fully written version of, of the podcast that the, you can run through. And what's really great about that is it will actually um, have some bookmarks where it's figured out where questions have been asked, um, getting through the magic of AI. Uh, so you can really just figure out some key, key areas where you ask questions 
um, or you've got some really good sound bites from the guest uh, or yourself. Um, the great thing about this as well, you can actually click on the text and it will play the audio. So if they do kind of get the transcribing a little bit wrong, you can actually see what was said. Um, but now you've got a full written transcript of your podcast. You can then do something what we call a content hub. And it's like, like I mentioned before, it's going through the podcast and finding those sound bites, those valuable uh, snippets that you can pull out and then use as sort of micro pieces of content throughout your LinkedIn profile, uh, Twitter, wherever, Instagram, um, and figuring out where you can create um, a bunch of content that kind of matches the pain points, matches what your audience want to hear, and then um, ultimately use the call to action to drive them to the full episode. One of the other things that I would definitely say that is worth thinking about as well for this is kind of working it backwards as well. So a lot of the time, if you want to build your audience um, on LinkedIn, etc., you're probably going to be wanting to stretch stretch your podcast content. Um, so actually thinking about what questions you ask um, that could be used for the future marketing, touching on those point, on those pain points. So um, those guest questions could potentially be touching on uh, some of the main pain points that are in the industry uh, and get their answers. You could have a consistent question that you ask all the time, potentially like, how did you get into um, the industry or um, how are you di solving diversity? And you can put all those questions together and always have um, a snippet from the guest on that. Um, and then the and then the final thing is potentially turning your episode into clips, um, one minute clips with subtitles, maybe a catchy hook title on it um, that you can share on LinkedIn or whatever social media platform. Um, ideally, you could potentially get five, six, maybe even more clips from per episode. And then you can schedule those over the, over the week to sort of build some demand um, for the podcast episode and sort of um, give you uh, a schedule of content to post out on a very regular basis. Um, and then the best thing about this, especially if you do a guest format, is you can actually tag the guest into it. So and then hopefully, and most of the time, they will share it out across their network. So then you're getting exposed to um, someone else's major network in your ideal market and if you consistently do that over time there's going to be a lot, of, a lot of overlap and if you take the time to then engage with the guests on a regular basis after and just get that guilty by association kind of thing with LinkedIn so anyone that's in that market you know software um, is always going to see you and if you're really capitalizing on a lot optimizing your LinkedIn profile and promote your your podcast on a regular basis then you're going to really um, drive that brand uh, and sort of personal brand reputation over time so it can be a fantastic um, tool to get you started and um, podcasting and it's extremely fun you can learn so much about your market and where you're going and what the future looks like and really use some of the insights that you get from these companies that are doing fantastic jobs and the people that you're talking to to inform your future product and where you're going to go and and really just get a bit of a, an understanding and get a name for yourself in that market so yeah that is it really that is a quick breakdown on getting started with a recruitment podcast like i said uh, we've got an ebook that breaks down some of these uh, especially the strategy into more detail um the podcast ebook goes through a bunch of things like um figuring out your concept to your audience how to brand it and um, the how where and when uh, topics finding the perfect podcast guest um some our recommendations on hardware and software um and then the stretching and the podcast promotion after so if you really want a full guide feel free to download that for free and again if you want to get our assistance with taking your podcast to the next level we can do some really cool stuff to really drive it um, forward even more and allow you to stand out uh, head and shoulders above the competition and really like hit home uh, with it uh, and that is something that if you want to discover then please book in with me or Calendly um uh, whatever you want and uh, we can i can give you about half an hour to an hour of my time to you know, give you some ideas and um, be a bit of a sounding board and um allow you to uh to really um make a tangible difference but again thank you for your time listening uh, again if you liked this um, podcast episode